Welcome to Electron Online. We found in the last video a very interesting result. It turns out if you're trying to keep a block from sliding down an incline and there is friction between the block and the incline, the force required will not be at a minimum when you're pushing parallel to the incline, nor will it be a minimum when you're pushing perpendicular to the incline. It'll be at an angle somewhere in between. And in the last video, we showed that that angle in this case was going to be 16.7 degrees. That angle, of course, depends upon the magnitude of the coefficient of friction. But now that we've found the angle, let's find out is the result actually such that the force is less than 164 newtons, which is the force required when you push parallel. And so this is the equation we ended up with in the last video. The sum, of course, was based upon this, this, if you're pushing parallel right here, but then we divide that by the cosine of phi plus the sine of phi times mu sub s, phi, of course, being the angle that we found in the previous video. If you look at this in the previous video, you can see where that equation came from. So now we're going to plug in the values. And of course, this will become less if the sum of these two terms is greater than one. If it's greater than one, what's in the denominator, then of course we get a result less than 164 newtons. So F min is equal to 164 newtons divided by the cosine of 16.7 degrees, which is what we found in the previous video, plus the sine of 16.7 degrees multiplied times mu sub s, which is 0.30. So this is 164 newtons divided by, now, 16.7, take the cosine of that, which is 0 0.9578, 0 0.9578, which means that this must be greater than the difference between one and this. Let's see if that's the case. So we take 16.7, Take the sine of that times 0.3, and we end up with plus 0 0.0862. And if we add those two together, plus 0.9578, indeed, we get a number bigger than 1. So this is equal to 164 newtons divided by 1.0440. Then if we take the inverse of that, times 164, we get that's equal to 157 newtons. Again, that's the minimum force required. In this case, we also found the magnitude besides the direction. And so you might wonder, well, how is that? Why is it that if we push parallel, that's not the minimum force? Well, it turns out that an angle that is fairly small so that the component which is parallel to the incline is the cosine of that angle multiplied times f. So it would be the cosine of 16.7 multiplied times f. Notice the cosine of a small number is still almost equal to 1. And then the sine of a number, which is small but not near 0, because the sine of 0, of course, is 0, but the sine of 16.7 degrees, let's plug that in here, 16.7, take the sine, that's almost 0.3. And of course, then if you multiply times 0.3, you still get a number big enough that when you add it to this, the denominator is greater than 1. In other words, if the angle is sufficiently large, the additional component of the force now that's pushing perpendicular to the incline will then add enough to the friction force that coupled with the component parallel to the incline of this force together will be greater or have more of an effect than the 164 newtons. And so therefore, you need less force to accomplish the same thing, meaning to accomplish not allowing the block to slide down the incline. It's quite remarkable. It's something that from intuition, you wouldn't expect that. You would expect that as the angle becomes bigger, you'll need more and more force to keep the block from sliding down, but that's not the case. There's actually a point at an angle of 16.7 degrees where you need less force. And that's the outcome. That's the beauty of physics and that is how it's done. <laughs> what you said about the friction? I think I understand it, how you add. So if you add to the friction, is the friction larger? Yes, and that's what you want. You want the larger friction because it's the friction force that will prevent 
the block from sliding down, as well as the force component that's parallel to the incline. So this component of the force, F cosine of phi, will keep the block from sliding, and a larger friction force will keep the block from sliding. So you lose a little bit of the force in the direction of the incline by making an angle, but that small difference here is more than compensated for by the extra friction force you get from the component that's pushing down on the block. But this only works if you keep it from falling backwards. It will not be the same if you're trying to push it up. That's a very good observation. So will this only work this way when you're, uh, when the, when you're keeping the block from sliding down? The answer is yes. This only works if you keep the block from sliding down. If you're, trying to keep the, if you're trying to push the block upward, then you need to have a force which is actually parallel because then the friction force goes against you and you don't want that to be bigger, you want that to be smaller. Yeah. So that's a good... I was a little confused and I realized, oh yeah, I'm pulling it up, not that, it up. Yep, that's the key. Um, so can you um, make the angle just a little smaller and the angle a little bigger and see how that changes the denominator? Yeah, let's try that. So let's, let's do that. So let's pick an angle of 15 degrees and an angle of 20 degrees to see if that works. So, for an angle of 15 degrees and an angle of 20 degrees, so what will be the force min required? Force min. Okay. And I will not block the board. Okay, so at 15 degrees, we're going to replace these by 15 degrees. So 15, take the cosine. Where's my cosine? There's my cosine. Uh, plus... 15 sine times 0.3 equals, and then we take the inverse of that. Inverse, 1 over x, and then times 164 equals, then it takes 157.2 newtons. So the force required would be 157.2 newtons, so slightly bigger than the force required. Can you write down the denominator? Hmm, okay. Uh, so we need to um, divide by 164 and take the inverse of that. No, like the, the two separate ones. Yep, yeah, right. Oh, the two angles, so. so at 15 degrees, the denominator would be, okay, you want the, the cosine and the sine, right? So the 15, take the cosine. That would be uh, zero. I know, but I don't have a lot of room here to spare. 0 0.9559. Oh, so what this means, this is bigger than this, which means that the component, if you make the angle smaller, the component pushing the block up, of course, will get bigger. That's what this means. But now, plus that part, so the sine of 15 times 0 0.3, 15, take the sine, times 0 0.3, that gives us, um, oh, let me try it again. 15 sine times 0.3 equals, so now that would be plus 0 0.0776. So the increase of this is more than negated by the decrease in this. So this decreases more than this increases, and therefore the sum of the two is less than this. No, no, it's less than 1.044. So when you combine those two together, so point, point 0.9659, oh, yep, plus 0 0.0776 together, this gives you together 1.0435. So you're now dividing by a smaller number, and therefore the, the, the fraction will be bigger. And then at 20 degrees, It'll go the other way again, so you have 20, take the cosine, plus 20, take the sine, times 0.3, take the inverse of that, and uh, times uh, 164, and you get uh, 171. So then you see that once you get past the 16.7 degrees and you get a bigger and bigger angle, you'll need more and more force to keep it from sliding down. It's the sweet spot. It's right when the angle is 16.7 degrees. You want to see the denominator at 20 degrees. We can do that. 20 degrees. Okay, so 20, take the cosine. So there you see a, a big reduction, 0 
9397. 9397. So notice a big reduction from here, a big reduction from there, right? So it's much smaller. And then that will not be large enough to compensate for it. So 20, take the sine times 0.3, you get 0 0.1026. 0 0.1026 and then when you add those two together 0 0.1026 plus 0 0.9397 you get together here that would be 1.0423 so you can see that it's smaller smaller means a bigger ratio so just in between, you get the minimum force required at 16.7 degrees. I think it's interesting. That's why when I saw the question from the viewer, I go, wow, that's an interesting question. Let's do a video on it. So we welcome questions. When they're interesting like this, we would be more than happy to do some videos on them.